So I want to spend a little bit of time refining our idea uh, of exact area. So we've, we've spent quite a bit of time doing things like finding the exact area under a curve, just like that. So let's, let's, let's refine that idea. So, so far what we have is we've, we take the limit as uh, the number of rectangles approaches infinity of a sum. And we're summing, uh, as i goes from 1 to n, we're summing the heights of a function depending on what, uh, depending on which rectangle we're on, we're going to get a different height. And then the heights times the width of, of of a, or sorry, the height of a rectangle really times the width of a rectangle, and we already saw the widths can vary, so we'll write that as delta x sub i. So this is the height depending on which rectangle you're on, and the times by the width of that same rectangle, and then we let the number of rectangles uh, uh, approach infinity, and that's been giving us exact area. It turns out, however, that this limit is not good enough. And let me show you why. What if we, we pick the first rectangle uh, to be half the width of the entire interval, the next rectangle to be half the width of that, the next rectangle to be half the width of, of that, the next rectangle to be half the width of that, the next rectangle to be half the width of that, so on and so on and so on. Well, we're get, the, the number of rectangles will certainly approach infinity, uh, but we, we aren't getting exact area. Because you can see clearly, if we took this rectangle, for instance, you know that's not exact area. We have, you know, some of this is is area we didn't want. So what what's better to say is not that the number of rectangles approaches infinity, but instead that that the width of each rectangle approaches zero. That way we can't end up with something like we just had. We can't end up with with this situation here where we have uh, some of the rectangles sticking out. Because if the width of each rectangle is zero, well then we go up to that specific height and that's all we have. We go up to the next specific height, the next specific height, etc., etc. And it turns out that if the width of each rectangle approaches zero, that forces the number of rectangles to approach infinity. So we'll have, you know, we'll have width of, uh, uh, each rectangle will have a width of, that's approaching zero, and we'll have uh, the number of rectangles will be approaching infinity, and that will will certainly give us the exact area. We'll fill in this entire uh, area under here. So the way that we write that, so this is our step one in refining this idea, is the limit as as the norm of of the partition, or in other words, the largest the width of the largest rectangle we want to approach zero. So if the width of the largest rectangle approaches zero, of course they all approach zero. And this in turn implies that the limit, or sorry, that the number of rectangles approaches infinity. So if we, if we just make this technical distinction and say, okay, the width of the largest rectangle is approaching zero, then we can be certain that the number of rectangles approaches infinity and now we can be confident that this is exact area. So we'll use this limit as n approaches infinity still. We'll still use that to do the computations. But we have to make sure that, you know, as the number of rectangles approaches infinity, that each rectangle is getting smaller, uh, or sorry, that every single rectangle, the width is approaching zero. We saw an example, we, uh, uh, we just did an example, I should say, of how you can have an infinite amount of rectangles, but the width of each rectangle doesn't approach in zero, or does not approach zero. So anyways, like I said, this is a technicality, but it's, it's an important one, it's good to be aware of. Okay, now let's refine one more idea. Uh, before, when we were choosing rectangles, we were saying, okay, here's, here's the rectangle between two x values, let's say x1 and x2. Okay, so the way that we did this was we said, okay, the height of the rectangle is just f of x2. This is how we did it when we took right-hand sums. We said the height of the rectangle is just f of x2, or we also talked about what happens if the height of the rectangle is f of, is, is on the left side, so f of x1, 
We know that that's a possibility. Okay. But it turns out that it doesn't have to be either of those. Those are two very specific examples, the, the height being on the very right side of the rectangle, the height being on the very left side. It turns out you could pick any number in this interval, let's call it C sub 1, and choose the height to be there. So now the height is F of C sub 1, the height of the rectangle. So the height is chosen at C sub 1. So C so if this is x1, c has to just be somewhere in this interval. If we choose c to be to always be the right side, then that's called a right-hand sum or an upper sum. If we choose c always to be, you know, the left side x1 in this case, then that's called a, a, a left sum or a lower sum. We also we could always choose c to be the exact middle. How would we do that? Well, we just say c sub i, or let's say c sub 1 is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2. We use the midpoint formula. Now, now we always choose the middle point of the interval. You know, we can choose this c any way we want. It's arbitrary how we choose it. It just has to be in that interval. Okay. So now this becomes, so this whole thing transforms into the limit as delta uh, sorry as the the large the width of the largest rectangle approaches 0 of the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of c sub i so c being any number in this in this interval uh, times by the width of uh, of the interval and this, uh, well, let me, let me say this first. This here is a Riemann sum, if you've heard that word before. I'm sure you have, if you're in a calculus class and you're talking about uh, area. That is a Riemann sum. When you take the limit, this particular limit of a Riemann sum, you get exact area. And that limit uh, of a Riemann sum is equal to something called the definite integral. So maybe I'll write this out in pink to get your attention. So this limit that we just talked about is a definite integral. So let me just take a moment to rewrite this and you take a moment to absorb what we've learned so far. So that's rewritten. Let me give myself some space on the right side here. This is equal to the definite integral from a to b that's the right uh, the, the the interval that we've been talking about is the closed interval from a to b so that's represented in the definite integral here of f of x our function times dx so this looks a lot like the notation for antiderivatives for taking antiderivatives and we'll find out why in the next video but this is the definition of a definite integral it's this the the limit as the largest rectangle uh, the width of the largest rectangle approaches zero of this Riemann sum so the limit of a Riemann sum is is this definite integral okay see you in the next video